And come on, say amen again. How many of you are excited about another chance to be in the house of the Lord just one more time? Come on, I feel an old anointing, the anointing of the season, saints, just another day that the Lord has kept me. Come on, just another day that he was by my side. Anybody glad about the fact that God kept you from hurt and harm and danger, kept you from things that you couldn't even see? Anybody glad about God's protection and about God's provision, about the fact that God did for you what you didn't have the sense to know that you needed to do for yourself? Come on, won't you worship the Lord? Come on, just send up a sound of joy. Come on, send up a sound of worship. Send up a sound of praise. Send up some Judah. Why don't you open up your mouth and bless the Lord? Oh, my soul. Come on, and all that is within me, bless God's holy name. No matter what's going on around me, no matter what's happening in me, I've got a reason to give God praise. He's just been that kind of good, been that kind of God. I don't know about you. Maybe you ain't had the week that I've had, but I was just glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. For those of you who are joining us online, I hope you're excited. I hope you can hear the sound of joy and excitement that is here in the sanctuary. We're so glad that you're here with us. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you are here with Friendship West. Do us a favor. Get into the spirit of some digital evangelism. Use that finger. Hit the like button. Then go ahead and hit share. Follow Friendship West across social media platforms so you can stay up to date with the latest that is going on here at the Wild Wild West. For those of you here who are here in the sanctuary, one more time, won't you give God praise? As we're delighted to be here on this fifth Sunday in the month of July, God didn't have to keep us or preserve us, but I am so glad, so glad that he did. We're going to sanctify and, and, and anoint this time of worship with a word of prayer. Would you just bow your head from wherever you are? Gracious God, our Father, we love you and we thank you. And we give you praise for this day because, Lord, you are good. In spite of bad situations, in spite of bad seasons, in spite of bad circumstances, in spite of bad people, you are still good. And so we come into this house. We're going to lift up our hands and open up our mouth and give you worship, a worship that is equal to your goodness in our life. Lord, for someone who is here standing in need, we ask that you would do what only you can do and provide and meet our need. Lord, we stand some in need of salvation, others in need of miracles, others in need of fresh revelation. Do that for us, we pray. We ask that you would meet us in our worship, that you would anoint those who are going to participate, Lord, from the choir stand, Lord, to the overflow, from the pulpit to the parking lot, from the ceiling to the floor. We ask that you would be satisfied with the sounds of worship that flow from this place. Lord, we give it up to you. We place our circumstances and our situations on the altar. We put our bitterness on the altar. We put our negative emotions on the altar. We pray and place our joylessness on the altar. We place our financial burden on the altar. We put the issues in our family on the altar, and we ask that you would be pleased. Lord, we put ourselves on the altar. We surrender our lives, our minds, our bodies, and souls to you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. And we pray that you would be satisfied and pleased with our service. Bless the preacher and the preached word. Bless those who stand in need is our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's continue to give Lord praise. Bless the name. Look, here's what we want to do. We want to take a moment and share uh, the celebration of those who are graduating from new members uh, orientation. Come on, can we give God praise for that? Hey, man, here's what I'm going to let you do. Come on and be seated right where you are, and let's talk about why it is that we want to take this time to celebrate what's taking place by way of this graduation. Because during the month of July, we have been uh, working our way through the first, the 12th chapter of Romans, first couple of verses, and in verse 2 uh, on the screen, it will come up. It will say that don't be conformed. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our our minds, yeah, that we might prove uh, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It's in that place uh, that we are going to take our cue as to why we ought to celebrate because Friendship West is about that kind of transformed life. Our church motto is 
that we're equipping changed people to change the world. Our church theme is that we're making disciples to make a difference. We're about that changed life. Here's the awesome thing is that as we continue reading in the further verses of Romans 12, we get another sense as to why we ought to celebrate and what that transformation of life looks like. So here it is in, in verses 4 and 5. When you get a chance, check it out. It talks about the idea for just as we are in one body, uh, I have many members and each each member has a different function. So it is in the body of Christ. We're in the body of Christ. That means there are two things. We're to have a renewed mind regarding community consciousness and also our Christian calling. Let's check it out. Our community consciousness is that we are part of the body because we're in the body. We don't understand our, our identity, our significance, our power is coming just from us, but as part of what takes place, in community so that we can make a difference in the community. And so we celebrate with those who are in community. In fact, it's in the 15th verse of Romans 12 that it tells us to rejoice with those who rejoice. So we celebrate because we're all in community together. But secondly, not only community co uh, consciousness, but also our Christian calling. Check out what it says. We're members and like members of the body, like eyes and ears and hands and feet and and each has a different function, that we also are members with a mission. We have a fit, a specific place where we're fit and a special place where we're to function. And consequently, what takes place is we are celebrating that persons have made their way through new members' orientation in order to discover their fit and their function. Let me say it a different way. In the body of Christ, everybody has a part to play and a place to slay. And when we recognize that none of us can be all we're supposed to be until all of us are about what God has called us to be, then what we do is we celebrate when persons are in that space. That's why we celebrate. Now, check this out. One of the things that's important for us to recognize is that we, as because we take community so seriously, they don't even go through their orientation individually, but in what we call beloved community groups. And so we are celebrating these groups, these community groups, as they come through. As pastor calls out the group's name and the member's name, we want to celebrate. And just in case there's somebody online or on site, or in the house or someplace around the world, please know. If you don't know what your place is, if you don't know what your part is, we want to help you with that. You can email us at orientation at friendshipwest dot org and we will get you get you the help to help you find your place and your part now friendship west mama said if you know better then we get to do better since we know why we ought to celebrate since we know that we're all in this together since we know that they are finding their place and it helps us to do our part then let's celebrate that we have new members who are graduate y'all didn't hear me did it go out let's celebrate as pastor calls out our new member orientation graduates The doors of the church are open. We uh, thank God for our amazing graduates, and they are absolutely all of that. And so we want to celebrate, first of all, the Fly Group, Faith Leads You, uh, Draylen Porter, Andrea Ard, I hope I say it right, Andrea Arduin. Say it for me, Andrea. Ardwin. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you. Brandy Lambert. Dakare Griffin. All right. They fly. They fly. Kirsten Bradford. Labricia James. Kathy Kenny. Tompea Coleman. Y'all fly. Y'all fly. Nikki Gibson. Yakara Israel. Raven Harris. Lisa Pipkins. Jasmine Starr, Harmony Ward, Kelsey Morrow, Daria Johnson. Listen, the Fly Group, they've already, as their community project together, they raised money for our scholarship fund. They just joined already, giving up to the scholarship fund. Yes. 
And then we have the warrior women for, of Christ, the warrior women of Christ, Lysandra Courtney, Karen Hebron, Nitra Tate. All right, please stand. Are they here? Huh? Oh, they're online. They're online. All right, they're online. And then we have the spiritual walker. Hey, there y'all are. What's up? What's up? Give them love. Give them love. Spiritual walkers, faith believers, Lavinia Hairston, Tanya Coleman, Rosina Hightower, Anthony J, Lori Gorday, Joe J. That rhyme, huh? All right, are they here? There you go, there you go. I see you, I see you. Welcome, welcome. So proud of you. And then we have the And Justice for All beloved community group. Sheila Evans. That's Sheila E. She can play the drums too. She can play the drums. Sheila E. Nathan Evans. I think he knows Sheila. Kyle Brown. Ashton Lloyd. Mary Captain. Stacy Brown. Tiffancy Barnes. Tessa Johnson. Listen, congratulations. Welcome, welcome. But then we got the ones. They are one of them ones. Chris Lynn Edwards, Danny Stamps, Rayshawn Carthorne, Yolanda Jordan, Todd May, yeah, Mariah Brown Logan, Donna Zay, Turner Brown with the hair. Patrick Wright, Michelle Gillum, we know that name, Gillum, Craig Johnson, Natasha Johnson, they are one of them ones, y'all. Matter of fact, let's celebrate and congratulate all 44 of the new members who united with Friendship West and finished their orientation discipleship. God bless you. We're proud of you. We love you. And we can't wait to see what God is going to do next. God bless you and God keep you. All right. So we're going to now be blessed. Oh, my God. I'm too happy. Do y'all see who's in the choir? That's our senior choir. Y'all are, y'all are representing. Y'all are representing. There's my mama. Y'all see my mama up there? My mama? Yeah. Y'all, I just got to hurry up and get in my seat because they're under the direction. Where's William Mitchell? There's William Mitchell, y'all. William Mitchell is an icon. He's a legend. And he has brought together this amazing choir. Some of y'all I've never heard sing in my life. And I cannot wait to hear what's about to happen up in here. And there is my mama. Did the, I, I need the folk online to see her uh, in California because California is tuning in just to watch her. Make sure y'all see her, okay? That's my mama over there. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm getting her back for all of them whoopings. <laughs>
Sit 
Hallelujah. That's a testimony, huh? Anybody have that testimony, Jesus, the center of your joy? Come on, let's praise God for Jesus. Praise God for joy that the world didn't give it to you and the world can't take it away from you. And while you're at it, would you praise God for this amazing silver choir? Y'all did that. Y'all did that. Yes. That was powerful. Thank you. We got to put y'all in the rotation. What? Y'all did that. They ready for the rotation. Amen. They already sitting down. They supposed to be up with the rest of us, but they ain't sitting down. <laughs> uh, but y'all deserve it. Y'all deserve it. Y'all can just, y'all can just, yeah, y'all just chill. Because my mother don't want to get back up. So just chill. And, but they did that, okay? They did some singing up in here. Jesus, the center of my joy. That was good. That was, look at them getting back up. Uh, but you ain't getting up, are you? After you did all that solo and you said, I done done my, I ain't standing until, that's right. <laughs> they deserve it. They do whatever they want to do. Amen. All right. Shall we pray? God, thank you so much for joy in Jesus. Thank you that in spite of sorrow and sadness, Jesus is the center of our joy. Thank you for joy. Thank you now for Jesus. Thank you for your word and for the power of your word. We thank you for the power of your word to speak to us, our situations, our spirits, even the spirit of the times. Thank you for your word, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. So God, order our steps in your word. I'm available to be used as your instrument, so stand in my body. Take over my mind and think your thoughts. Take my mouth now and speak, bless, and give power to your word. May your word go forth in such a way that none of us leave this experience online or in the house the same way we came. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to call your attention to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. And there in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, we find the words of our text for this message. I'm going to read in your hearing from the New Living Translation of the Greek New Testament, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It reads, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. You may be seated in God's presence. I want to put a tag on this text, and in these few moments I'd like to use as a subject from which to preach, being down with what God is up to. Being down with what God is up to. In writing the story of your life, be careful not to put, give anyone else the pen. I wish that was original with me, but I borrow it from Champagne Poppy Drake. Drake in one of his songs says, when you are writing the story of your life, make sure that you don't put the pen in someone else's hand. That's a bar right there. Because in a real sense, if you're not careful, others will draw up a job description for your life that they expect you to live down to. And the moment you step outside of the box of what they define you as, they immediately critique you, attack you, and talk bad about you. And so Drake said, as you are writing your own autobiography, make sure you don't give anyone else the pen. Why? Because there are those, especially if you are talented and with gifts, who will use your talent in order to finance their own dreams. In a real sense, they will use you, even abuse you, until they have no use for you. And so Drake is on to something when he says, 
is as you are writing your story, make sure you don't give anyone else the pen. But then, my sisters and brothers, I also must share with you a quote from the late great preacher J. Wallace Hamilton, who said, Our lives are like novels in which we intend to write one story, but then life writes a different story. And already I'm in somebody's Kool-Aid. I just called out your flavor because you have your dreams, you have your plans, you have your desires and aspirations only to have them bump into this thing called life. Our lives are like novels. We are trying to write our story according to J. Wallace Hamilton. We intend to write one story, but life has a way of editing our story and before you know it where we end up has nothing to do with where we planned on being who am I talking to that can honestly say yes I've tried to write with the pen of my own agency my life story only to have it edited for me and now where I planned on being and where I actually am ain't got much to do with each other why because my sisters and brothers life is a trip and will take you places you never plan on going and so you have life acting up you have people acting up I can give you both of them I see my E Gamma brothers and they know this name well the late Marvis May Marvis was my best friend my road dog best man in my wedding Marvis was my sweet mate during my academic matriculation at now defunct but never dead Bishop College and Marvis on the one hand was one disciplined and focused brother. Marvis was disciplined and focused so much so he graduated from Bishop in three years. Not only was he disciplined and focused, Marvis could have a good time but because he was disciplined and focused he had a good time at the right time and then on top of that he He's disciplined and focused, but some of my frat will agree Marvis was crazy. Marvis was just crazy. Marvis was a hot mess. And I won't forget my sisters and brothers as I was reflecting this, I was reflecting this week because our city, it could have been so much hotter, but somehow some ice cold showed up and kept the temperature from going up to 130 degrees. And so you ought to be thanking God that it didn't get as hot as it could have because the ice cold brothers of Alpha Phi Alpha cool things down. And my sisters and brothers, I'm reflecting on my time as I was matriculating at Bishop and a part of E Gamma. But check this out. Before we pledge, Marvis and I, we are sweet mates. And, and Marcus, this is before you got to Bishop and we're sweet mates. May check out what you missed, Marcus. We had this particular a um, uh, uh, living room that was between two rooms. Marvis on this side, I'm on this side. And Marvis hated the fact because I told you he's focused and disciplined. And as a consequence of being focused and disciplined, he did not believe that we should have meetings in the living room while we were having our classes during the week. And yet every single night, I would host our friends and we would sit up and solve the problems of the world. We would solve the race problem. We had so much genius in that room that we broke down. We analyzed the racist systems. We broke down. We did all of that. And about 12 o'clock midnight, here comes Marvis out of his room. I won't describe what he was wearing, but Marvis made it uncomfortable for us to look at him and then he would turn out the lights to let us know it was time for an ending to our meeting. Well, Marvis got sick and tired of my late night meetings occurring Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Marvis one particular Wednesday. It was in January. It's cold and semester has just started. All of us in the suite have 8 o'clock classes and y'all know what Marvis did? Marvis had the nerve 
were after putting us out of, out of the living room and sending us to our respective bedrooms, Marvis stayed up for an hour and unbeknownst to us, he got up and found every timepiece in the room and set it four hours ahead. He got our watches, he got our clocks, our alarm clocks were set for 7 o'clock and 6.45 respectively because Marvis wanted to pay, wanted us to teach us a lesson and so it set for four hours ahead. Check out what happened. Use the imagination that you have and understand that when it hit, here it is, 3 o'clock or 2.45, our alarm clocks began to go off. I looked at my watch. I could not believe it. It was 7 o'clock. I had to get up and hurry and get dressed. And y'all, all of us, I wish you could see us on the screen of your anointed imagination, rushing to get dressed, fighting over who was going to take the first shower, and then running down the steps outside. It's dark. We understand. It's February, late January. It's supposed to be dark, but this dark? And I ran to the building where my class was. Once I got to the building, a security guard was calling my name and asking me what I was doing. I looked at him like he was stupid and said, I'm going to class. He then looked at me like I was stupid and asked me, what have you been smoking? I know you don't drink, but here you are at 3 o'clock in the morning, going to, at 4 o'clock in the morning, going to class. I looked at my watch. I said, man, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. He said, no, somebody done played you because it is not 8 o'clock, it's 4 o'clock. Look at my watch. Y'all, we got back to our room. I won't tell you what we did to Marvis. It's not legal. But we hazed him before we pledged. But the bottom line is, note with me the point I'm trying to make. All of us were in the dark because we did not know what time it was. All of us were in the dark because somebody was playing games with us. All of us were in a dark place because we went by time that was given to us by somebody else. I hope y'all are getting this because it also reminded me of what took place during the Battle of the Bulge December of 1944, World War II. And the story is the German paratroopers disguised in Allied fatigues, they somehow penetrated Allied lines and once they got behind Allied lines, they spent that night turning the signs on every street in that major metropolitan city that was strategically significant because of its geographical location. Y'all know what happened the next morning. The citizenry woke up and tried to go about business as usual. Many got lost. Others ended up where they did not want to be. Why? Because somebody had changed the signs. Marvis had us in a dark place because we did not know what time it was because to quote Frankie Beverly too many games people play and then in 1944 the signs had been changed and people found themselves lost I gotta hang out there because somebody is online or somebody is in the house and you are in a dark place because of games that people have played with you you are in a dark place because perhaps you don't know what time it is in terms of God's will. Somebody is not where you planned on being because the signs were changed on you. And if that is the case, I got a word for you. The word is we serve a God who basically says if you connect with God, God is so good that God will navigate you through your nightmare. God will somehow direct you through your dark places. God will ensure that when others play games with you, that 
God gets on your side and you say checkmate to the game they're trying to play. I think that's where I'm trying to go because that's what the Apostle Paul is writing as he writes the Christians in Rome, which is a trip by itself. They are the othered of the other. They are on the margins because they are seen, I've shared with you, as a religious sect of the sect that was called Judaism. And so here they are, the othered of the othered, in the shadows of the Roman Empire, claiming that they are following the one who is the light of the world. One more time, understand that for them to worship Jesus and declare that he was Lord was in, was in a real sense a, a revolutionary, even subversive approach politically because Caesar referred to himself as Lord. Caesar referred to himself as Lord of the earth, of the sky, and of the sea. And Caesar also referred to himself as Savior. Understand the word Savior and Lord in biblical antiquity, they were political terms. And so for Jesus to be referred to as Savior and Lord was a slap in the face of the emperor and the Roman emperor. Empire. And so understand that is why my sisters and brothers, the people of God who Paul is addressing in this text, they find themselves othered. They find themselves as subversive in a Roman Empire that is against them. And yet look what the Bible says. Paul lets them know in chapter 12 verse 1 that worship, watch this, ain't just something you do on Sunday. It's a lifestyle. Listen to what he says. I encourage you, my sisters and brothers, in light of what God has mercifully done for you, that you present all that you are as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your spiritual service of worship. You missed your shout. He does not say show up on Sunday and get your worship on. He says no. Every Every single day of your life, I want your life to be of such that you are ascribing worth to God. And y'all, I've discovered if I worship God all week long, when Sunday shows up, I don't have to have a praise team to rile me up. I don't need the preacher to be God's cheerleader because I've been worshiping God all week long. I've been walking in worship. What is worship? Worship means I ascribe worth to God. Y'all didn't shout. And in the Greek New Testament, it means to kiss the hand of God. It's the picture of a lap dog that is licking the hand of its owner. Have you ever seen a lap dog lick the hands of its owner? Y'all know why it's doing that. It's doing that because those hands feed it. Those hands protect it. Those hands pick it up and carry it when it can't carry itself. I'm going to go ahead and shout myself because every single day of my life, I find myself having to lick the hand of God because those hands have fed me. Those hands have provided for me. Those hands have protected me. Those hands have carried me when I could not care. Is there anybody here who says, you know it, excuse me, Omegas, but because I worship God, God, Monday through Sunday, when you see me licking God's hand, it ain't nothing but the dog in me. I'm getting my worship on. And so watch it. Watch it. Verse 1 says we, we worship God as a lifestyle. And then he says, verse 2, and don't be conformed to this world. I want you to be transformed by changing the way you think. And that way you can discern God's will for your life. Boom, there it is. All 
of this is about how to discern and know what God is up to in your life. And y'all, it dawned on me if you're really trying to walk by faith and not by sight, you want to be in God's will. And somebody has tuned in. Somebody is in the house and that's your question. How can I know God's will? I'm dealing with this job situation. I've got decisions to make. I've got choices to make. I'm dating someone I'm thinking heavily about. I need to know what God's will is. Help me, preacher. Find God's will. Here's your shout. Once you find God, you find God's will because wherever God is, that's where God's will is. And so when you worship as a lifestyle and then make up your mind, here's your shout right here, that you are down with whatever God is up to, that's when you find the will of Almighty God. Uh, I make this real plain. Uh, Howard Thurman, amazing, liberation mystic. Howard Thurman often spoke of sacred synchronicities. I like that. How, how God spiritually and in a sacred fashion shows us there are benign connections so that when we feel stuff is falling apart, it's falling apart because God is putting stuff together in a way we wouldn't have seen had it just gone our way. That's some good stuff right there. Well, it's good to see. So, so, so watch this, watch this. I'm about to shout because Howard Thurman shares that when he was a boy growing up in Daytona Beach, Florida, Florida, watch this. DeSantis would love this because he's growing up in Daytona Beach, Florida, and black students were only allowed to go to seventh grade. That meant that they could not go to high school because to go to high school, you had to have an eighth grade education. And so the system said that they could only go to seventh grade, and that meant they were missing the one grade they needed in order to go to high school. And my sisters and brothers, isn't that real DeSantis-like? Because the system basically was saying, you can only do this, but I know you want to get to this, but we legally won't let you get to this because of the system that we have set up. Y'all always understand that systems and structures are designed to produce outcomes. And so it's not an accident that at the top of every negative statistic, outcome are black people. At the bottom of every positive statistic are black people. Why? Because systems and structures are designed to produce certain outcomes. And so look at the system in Daytona Beach. But don't you love black people? Because black people always find a way to uh, work through a system and, and do something that systems never saw coming. And that's what the black folk in Daytona Beach did. Deb, it's going to kill you. The black folk in Daytona Beach, they saw that Howard Thurman had a great mind and they said, we're not going to let this boy get messed over by the system. And the principal of his school said, I'm going to personally tutor you. I'm going to take my time and tutor you eighth grade education and eighth grade education. He passed the eighth grade test to the shock of the system. And then he got ready to go to Jacksonville to the Florida Baptist Academy to go to high school. And he worked odd jobs. His family and friends and community raised enough money to pay for his tuition because the community got together in order to go around the system, work the system in spite of the system. I got to stop right there because, y'all, I refuse to believe that the system can tell our children where they can go. I refuse to believe that because they've outlawed diversity, equity, and inclusion in Texas then we gonna let that block us and stop us. Listen we'll create our own system and we'll educate our own children. Y'all still not getting this and so watch what happened. Howard Thurman 
the week before school in Jacksonville, takes the train, but he gets to the train station. I hope y'all see the sacred synchronicities going on. Seventh grade education blocked him because of the system. But a, te a principal said, I'm going to teach you up and you're going to graduate without having to go to a school that has eighth grade sacred synchronicity. But then here it is, David Malcolm Magruder. He gets to the train station and his trunk is held together by a rope. And when the person receiving the ticket sees it, says to him, this can't go unless you pay $3. He only had $1. He sat there and cried until a black man walked up in overalls and a denim cap. And the black man said, why are you crying? Howard Thurman told him why. And Uncle Vinny, when Howard Thurman told him why, the black man said, stop crying, follow me. He followed him to the ticket office, paid his ticket, paid his fare, paid the shipping for the trunk. He said, now go on to school and you make us all proud. Howard Thurman said he had never seen the man, had never seen the man after the man did what he did for him, but it just lets you know God will send the right folk at the right time to do something for you that you could never do for yourself. It's a sacred synchronicity. Is there anybody here who can testify? I ain't here today because I did everything on my own. God sent the right people at the right time who did the right thing when I could not do it myself. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's why the old folks sang all night, all day. Angels keep watching over me. So, so, so how, how does this sacred synchronicity works? I love this. You got to be down with whatever God is up to. What does it mean? I'm almost done. The text says, I love it. Text says that, that, oh, I like this, that, that you should make up your mind to never go with the flow, be the flow. Now. Thank you. you. You didn't call me out, Antonio. Uh, that's Ho. That ain't me. That's, that's Jay-Z. Jay-Z said, don't just go with the flow. Be the flow. Because the flow, if you go with it, will take you some places you never should have gone. Oh, y'all can play holy on me with you all you want to, but, but some of y'all done dated some flows. I shouldn't go there, huh? Okay, so, so, so you dated Flo, and where you went, you're still trying to get back from. Preach, Freddie Haynes. I'm doing the best I can. So, 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 so the flow will take you places. And so Jay-Z says, don't just go with the flow. Be the flow. And y'all, it's in the text. Paul says, don't be conformed to this world. And the word world in the Greek, it's, it's, it's eon, which means don't be conformed to the flow of the age. Uh, th th this is what the age is doing, but you are citizens of an age that's on the way. And so because you are citizens of what's on the way, you don't let the flow that is, you don't let the flow get in your way because you're looking forward to what's coming and what's coming is ordering your steps. What's coming is ordering what you do, what you think, how you live because you know what's on the way. I like, I, I, I phrase it like this. It's like we walk with an eschatological hope as we navigate this existential hell. Okay, so what I'm doing is showing you I'm going to school, okay? So, so that's why I had to use some big words. But you know eschatology, it's the study of the future, but not yet. Existentialism, existence is right now. And so here it is. I've got my eyes on the not yet as I'm navigating right now. But it's not yet 
that orders my steps right now. And since not yet orders my steps right now, I don't let right now determine who I am and define what I can do because my not yet is pulling me and beyond my right now and I never make a decision because I'm not conformed to this world. That's why I'm so proud of the brothers of Alpha Phi Alpha. You know what the brothers did? We already had our schedule out for the next convention in two years in Orlando, Florida. Brother said, oh no. Since DeSantis wants to be the Nazi, since DeSantis is running for Grand Wizard, what we're going to do is pull our convention from going to Florida because we refuse to spend our money where you will not respect us. We're not going to let you disrespect our humanity and show up there anyhow. I hope a lot of black folk will pick up on that. Wherever you go, have so much respect for yourself, respect for God, respect for your humanity that you will not pay for your dehumanization. So check this, check this. Uh, Kurt Flood, Kurt Flood, that was a bad brother. Kurt Flood played baseball, and this week I learned that Jalen Brown, Jalen Brown got paid. And he's a conscious brother. He got paid, y'all. Richest contract in NBA history. And he has Kurt Flood to thank for that. Because Kurt Flood set the stage for free agency. Kurt Flood basically said he was making $90,000 a year in the 60s. That's good money. But Kurt Flood, watch this, got traded and did not want to go. And so Kurt Flood said, I ain't going. And he filed a lawsuit against Major League Baseball. And when he filed that lawsuit against Major League Baseball, he said, I'm no slave, and so I should be able to play wherever I want to play. I'm about to shout you, Major League Baseball, they dogged him, and he's being interviewed by Howard Cosell. Howard Cosell is interviewing Kurt Flood and says, Kurt, you call yourself a slave, but you're making $90,000 a year. And he said, I'm still a slave because as long as I don't have agency over my life, that means that somebody else is pulling my strings. Don't let somebody make you think because they're paying you so much money that you are supposed to do what they say and, and they dictate your life. Understand, Kurt Flood was not conformed. Oh, I got to tell you all this. I got to tell you all this. So, so. Last night, I was speaking in New Orleans for the National Medical Association, and so I spoke for them, and after speaking for them, Dr. Griffin, James Griffin, uh, he's a member, I saw him last night, Sheila, and so Dr. James Griffin, uh, he came up to me afterwards, was walking me, uh, almost like security, to, to my um, elevator, and so check out what happened. He sent a pastor. Uh, we hope that you don't have any airplane illustrations in the morning. And so I said, you ain't lying. I don't need no airplane illustrations cause, because my flight was leaving at 6 to get here, and I had no wiggle room. It was like I had to get here because I had to see my new members. And, and so I had no wiggle room. And the reason I was really upset is because yesterday, American did the fool. And my flight was delayed. They had the nerve to tell me you can catch a, another flight. It was really jacking with my schedule. And so, you know what happened? Dr. Griffin said, I know you don't want no illustrations, and I'm going to pray it doesn't happen. And y'all, I got an illustration. <laughs> Here's what happened. Here's what happened. It was really jacked up. Last night, finishing up my sermon, and I get a call, and I recognize it, American Airlines. And I answer the phone with attitude. What? And they said, uh, is this Mr. Frederick Haynes? I said, yes. And they said, um, well, we just want you to know that the original craft for your 6 a.m. flight is being taken out of service. And so I said, keep talking. And she said, well, what we've done, we've got another aircraft, but it's smaller. And so we are moving you back. No, okay, you didn't get that. No, you didn't get no, that. Okay. First of all, I fly first class all the time. 
All right. I find, and and don't, don't, don't hate. Celebrate. One day you can participate. I fly first class. All, I'm first class Negro. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah, I fly first class. So, so, uh, so, so do you invite me? First class ticket. So, so here's what happened. They invited me first class ticket. And so she going to tell me I'm moving back. She said, and if you don't want to move back, we'll give you a $300 voucher and, and, and we will give you a ticket on the next flight. I said, I said, first of all, I ain't moving back. Uh, she said, well, why not? I said, because I am concierge key. Look me up. Concierge key is like. So, so, and I ain't bragging, I'm testifying. Here it is, here it is. So she said, so she said, you're concierge key? I said, look me up. And then she said, oh, well, no, you don't have to move to the back. We will keep you right where you are because I didn't know you were concierge key. And y'all, I went biggie. If you don't know, and this morning, I rode in my first class seat on the original flight because she was trying to make me go with the flow. The flow would have been to accept whatever she was giving me, but because I know who I am, because I know what I got going for me, I ain't going back. I done flown too much. I done been through too much. I done worked too hard. I done paid too much for you to send me back. I ain't just talking about a flight. I'm talking about your life. You've been through too much. you paid too much of a price. And you better tell anybody that tries to set you back, I ain't going back because I know who I am. And if you don't know... I got to rush on. And don't be conformed to this eon, but be transformed by changing your mind. Watch it. By the renovation of your thinking. That's the Greek. Be transformed, metamorphosized by how you think. Because when you change your mind, you change your life. <sighs> oh, one of, the, one, one of the greatest gifts y'all gave Deb and I, we went to see Aretha Franklin uh, in Baltimore. Y'all sent us to see Aretha. It was my lifelong dream to see the Queen of Soul in concert. And we flew to Baltimore and we saw the Queen in concert. Deb left early. Uh, from Baltimore because I had a flight going someplace else and so my flight was later. Little did we know that y'all set us up in the same hotel as Aretha Franklin. Her bus was out front. Her bus is out front and so I called Michael Eric Dyson who is from Detroit. He knows the queen. I said, yo, Michael Lee D, Aretha Franklin's bus is here at the Four Seasons Hotel. And he said, let me call her. <laughs> got her on speed dial, called Aretha Franklin, told Aretha Franklin, you got to meet this preacher. You got to hear this preacher. He's at your hotel. Aretha says, tell him don't leave, but I'm on my way downstairs and to meet me on the bus. Y'all, I got on the bus with the queen. And we had a good conversation. The queen is real regal. She's just Aretha. Uh, she's also kind of hood. So, so, so it's like, and, 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 and black folk can do that. We, we know how to be regal and hood. We, 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 we can do both of them. That, that's why you, you, you just, our flavor is just unique. She hood, but she's regal. She's still the queen. And so, so the queen has talked to me. And so, and so we're just talking. And she told me something that really blessed my life. She said that when she first, she said she grew up. She said, and I knew this. She said, I grew up singing gospel. I sang with the best of them. My daddy, great C.L. Franklin. And then I began to go R&B. When I went R&B, they first tried to make me into a slick 
lounge singer. I spoke with Bob Dylan. I spoke with my daddy, and both of them said, you from the church. You got soul. You ain't got no business trying to be who you're not. And so here's what you do. You change your mind, and you let them know you're going to change management. And that's when she went down to Muscle Shoals, Alabama, hooked up with musicians that respect her church soul background and before you know it R-E-S-P-E-C-T find out what it means to me before you know it never loved a man before you know it she began to get hit after hit I'm going to knock on your door your door till you come back to me that's all I'm going to do I'm talking about the queen they were trying to make her into something that God had not made her but once she changed her mind God transformed her career and all I'm trying to let somebody know don't let other folk tell you who you are you better know who you are and live in the power of who you are uh, uh, who was it he wrote uh, Miss Education Carter G. Woodson Carter G. Woodson testifies, this is really good right here, Carter G. Woodson testifies that he had the brain power. He goes to Harvard to earn a PhD. Every day in school at Harvard, he's told what he's not by teachers and fellow students, but he earned his PhD. And once he got his Ph.D. from Harvard, Carter G. Woodson watched this, then spent the next 50 years of his life trying to re-educate miseducated black folk while at the same time ensuring that this nation was taught the truth about who we are. And so he spent the remaining 50 years of his life basically re-educating us and America about us. Why? Because his mind had been changed. There's something powerful about a changed mind. There's something dynamic about a made up mind because once your mind changes then you've got power from within and I think that's what I'm trying to say. It matters not what's going on around you once your mind has been renovated. That is the Greek word right there. Be transformed by the renewing the renovation of your mind. Have you ever seen renovations going on renovations tear down what was and then renovations clean up the mess and after they clean up the mess they begin to put in what's new and before you know it what was is no longer there what is is something that what was didn't even look like and that's what happens when you know God when your mind gets renovated God renovates the way you think about yourself and so when you see yourself you don't see yourself as other folks see you you see yourself as God sees you how does God see you God looks at you and says look at my child God looks at you and says look at the head and not the tail God looks at you and says look at the light of the world look at the salt of the earth start seeing yourself not as what other folk have said about you but see yourself according to what God says about you oh man I feel I've, I've kept you too long let me go ahead and wrap it here it is and I'm done text says then you can discern divine direction which is all to the good <sighs> that was some good stuff right there then you will discern what is good acceptable and perfect the will of God for your life. Meaning that once you worship as a lifestyle and then make up your mind to not allow the world to tell you who you are and then you live with a renovated mind, then you can discern what God is up to in your life. I love that right there because God has a plan for you.
Jeremiah chapter 29 puts it like this to a people who are on hold because they are now in Babylon. And the book says while they are in Babylon, God says, I'm not about to deliver you yet. I'm going to hold you right here in Babylon. But while you're in Babylon, just know this, for I know the plans I have for you. Plans for good, plans for a hope, plans for you that are real good. Y'all didn't share. God says, I know the plans I have for you. Do y'all know the word have in the original language? It means forecast. God says, I know the plans I forecast for you. You don't know what a forecast is? Watch the news. And when you watch the news, there is a weather segment. During the weather segment, they don't just tell you about the temperature today. They tell you what's coming down the way. And God basically says, I know the plans I forecasted for you. Aren't you glad for your forecast? I'm about to give y'all a forecast. The forecast is weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The forecast is even the youth shall faint and be weary. Young folks shall fall, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, run and not get weary, walk and not faint. Anybody know the forecast? The forecast says you ain't seen nothing yet. The best is yet to come. And that's a word for everybody here. God has a forecast for your life. Dr. King said, mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. There's a forecast for your life. Y'all didn't like Dr. King? Well, let me go with my man Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick, what's the forecast? All my life I had to fight. But if God got us, we gonna be alright. That's the forecast. I've got a feeling everything's gonna be alright. The Holy Ghost told me everything's gonna be alright. Be alright. Be alright. Be alright. I'm down with what God is up to. What is God up to? Beloved, now are we the sons and daughters of God. It doth not yet appear what we shall be. But when we see him, we're going to be just like him because we'll see him as he is. I'm down with what God is up to. Hallelujah. Somebody has tuned in. Somebody is in the house. And your whole thing is, I'm trying to figure out God's will. I'm trying to figure out God's will. Listen, make worship your lifestyle. I'm trying to figure out God's will. Quit shaping your life by the patterns that other folk have drawn up for you. Give God your mind because life ain't always what happens to you, it's what you think about it. Oh, that was good. I didn't even... How you thinking? Let God renovate your mind. Renovate your mind and when God renovates your mind, the good news is you get transformed so you fool you and other folk around you who thought you'd always be this but now you that because you got changed from within and that's how we win we win from within Lauren he'll help us how you gonna win if you ain't right within and then you discern God's will and, and God on purpose had someone tune in or in the house and that's where you are God, what's your will for me? What is your will for me? I want to pray for you. I want to cover you in prayer because I believe God has a plan for you. God is up to something. Sacred synchronicity is going on in your life. Some, some systems are trying to block you. Sometimes you ain't got enough, but God is connecting everything. Everything is lining up. 
I promise you it is. God can let stuff fall apart to put stuff together better than you ever imagined. And so, so, preacher, I want to know God's will. I want to pray for you, okay? I want to pray for you. God, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you so much for your plans that you have for us. Thank you for the forecast. In the midst of our frustration, in the midst of feeling like we're on hold, you have a forecast. And thank you that the forecast is sunny. S-O-N-N-Y. Thank you for your son being in our forecast. And God, right now, I'm covering in prayer each and every one of these, your children, trying to figure out your will. Draw them closer and closer to you. Matter of fact, draw them so close to you that their prayer every day is, have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. You are the potter, we are the clay. Now mold us and make us after your will. While we're waiting, yielded and still, draw us nearer, nearer, blessed Lord. Draw us close to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And as you draw us close to you, please, God, give us that worshiping spirit every day. Please, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, deliver us from trying to please other people. Deliver us from tripping on what other folk think about us. And help us to be transformed by the way you renovate our thinking. Show us your will in Jesus' name. Now, God, I pray for those who don't have a relationship with you. May they know if they want your prayers, they got to know you. Save the lost. Bring home to your church those who have no church home. May they feel your will even right now in Jesus' name. Listen, as you continue praying, if you are in the house or online, and you know good and well, it's time for you to give your life to Jesus Christ. I want you right now, my sister, my brother, man, girl, boy, woman, however you self-identify, here's what you do. Stand up, step out of the aisle you're in, come on down front and give your life to Jesus Christ. Today is a mighty good day to get your life straight. Come on down and do it right now. God is speaking. Bless you, bless you, bro. Bless you, somebody else. I'm so glad bro came down. You know why? Because here's the deal. You sitting out there and your thing is, I don't know if I should go up there or wait. And God touched him. So what you waiting on now? Now is the time. If you're here and you want to get in God's will, you're here. You want to be down with what God is up to. Why don't you right now stand up, step out, come on down and give your life to Jesus Christ. Bless your heart. I see y'all coming. Somebody else, come on right now. You want to be down with what God is up to? Come on, stand up, step out. Come on down. Give your life to Christ. Come on, come on, come on. They coming, y'all. Come on, encourage them, encourage them. Somebody else, somebody else. What you waiting on? Come on. You want to be in God's will? You want to know God's will, God's plan? Here's what you do. Stand up, step out, come on down. You got to get with God to get in God's will. Stand up, step out, come on down. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Preacher, I got that part first. But here it is. I want to join church. I feel God leading me to join church. If that's you, listen, don't you want to be in community with people on the way to being what they're supposed to be? We're not perfect, but we're forgiven, and we're trying to live this thing on purpose. So if you're here and you're saying, preacher, I feel led to join this church. We'd love to have you. I'd love to be your pastor. Stand up, step out, come on down and join church. Preacher, I used to go to church. I stopped going. I'm ready to get back in church. Come on, stand up, step out, come on down, and let's join church. Preacher, here's my deal. I just moved to Dallas, Fort Worth from another area. I got a church home back there, but now I live here, work here, go to school here. I just ain't got a church home here. That's you. Stand up, step out, come on down, give your life to Christ, and join church. If you're online, all you got to do, dial that number right there, 469-498-0210, or email us at Join us at friendshipwest.org and you can connect with Jesus and the church today. You're still coming. Bless your heart. Watch this. Here it is. We're getting ready to stand. When we stand, that's your signal. Stand up. Step out. Come on down. Give your life to Christ. Join church. Most importantly, let's get you in God's will. Y'all ready? Shall we stand? Won't you come? Same choir.
because I'm feeling this real strong. And you know, yeah, if somebody coming, maybe that's who I was waiting on. Hallelujah. 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 That's awesome. That is so awesome. Let me do it just in case, because I was feeling real strong. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's what's up. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for confirmation. Thank you. Thank you. So just in case, just in case, it's you. God is waiting on, and you know who you are. Let me just say this. You're just saying, I'm waiting on God. No, God is waiting on you. And, and, and I know the excuses. I've used them. I'll wait till next week. You ain't even promised next week. And most of us with Jesus are basically saying, if I had to do it over again, I'd have got with him a lot sooner. Saved me a whole lot of stuff. Uh, and then maybe your thing is, well, I don't want to do it in front of all these people. People? Are you, are you serious? People? Get over people because people ain't got a heaven or hell to put you in. Listen, it's all about what God is leading you to do right now. God wants you in God's will, which is best for you. Well, there's another one you may be saying, well, but it's a church and I'm kind of done with church because church got all these, ch church that wounded me, church got all these bad folks. I, get, I promise you, I get it. I got so many church wounds, it is crazy. I know church wounds. But listen, it's the best thing God has for us. And God never called us, watch this, to create perfect churches. God says what I'm going to do is create forgiven Christians who strive to be perfect. And as we strive together, we can create communities of love. All right? And that's what we're trying to do. So, so I want to help you right now. If, if you're here and you know it's time for you to give your life to Christ because you're tired of feeling lost, you're here. And you feel God leading you to join church, you're here. And you want to be in God's will. You want to be in God's will. Here it is. I'm going to ask everyone right now, everyone right now, just pray, God, touch my neighbor. And whatever that need is, whatever that need is, let God do what God's going to do. So somebody's prayed for you right now. Okay, I need you to know that. Somebody's prayed for you. If you're here, you're not saved, you're here, you're ready to give your life to Christ, you're here. You know, you got to get in God's will because if you don't get in God's will, life just won't. All right? That was kind of good. I could have used that. Uh, or you feel God leading you to join church. The choir's going to sing one more round. And as they're singing, that's for you. Come on, from the balcony, main floor risers, come on, give your life to Christ. Join church. Be down with what God is up to. Come on. Thank you so much for allowing God to speak to you and for connecting with us. And so we're going to pray for you, God, in Jesus' name. These are your children. Please bless them in a very special way. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Order their lives in your word. Grow them in your word. Use us as their family to love on them, to build them up, that they might become all that you would have them to as they live lives of purpose in your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and hallelujah. Please go with our ministers. They're going to share with you out of God's word and connect you to us. Y'all, let's praise God one more time for our new family. Hallelujah. 
Listen, right before we go, it's offering time. It's offering time. It is offering time. I am asking you today, please, please, number one, give in a way that honors God and God's word. God's word that says, bring the whole tithe. That's a tenth off the top. What do you mean when you tithe? You're saying, God, you're first in my life. What do you mean when you tithe? You're saying, God, you are owner and I am manager, steward of what you blessed me with. And I want to be a blessing because you've already blessed me. That's what it means to tithe. Won't you right now, please, give God that tithe. And then you're saying, preacher, what else does the Bible say? Does Jesus say anything about it? Jesus says tithing is what you ought to do. It's the basement of our belief. And then Jesus said it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. So please, won't you right now, you know this church does a lot of good. We could do even more if we all did our part. So please, won't you right now give in a liberal and loving way. You can text to give 972-200-9419. You text FWBC to that number and the amount where it d d uh, designates. And then you can scan the QR code. Just use your phone, take that picture, scan the QR code, give through that vehicle. Or if you have the GiveLify app, search out Friendship West. Give through that vehicle, and that works. And then you can also give via our website, friendshipwest.org, and our app, FWBC app. Give through that app, or of course, old school, we got envelopes for you. So please give in a way that honors God. God, thank you for the privilege of giving. Thank you for giving to us so generously. The blessed gift and giver, use these gifts that through them your kingdom will come and will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and hallelujah. Listen, you get ready to go, but I want to uh, shout out my, my uh, E. Gamma brothers who are here. So glad to see y'all. Uh, Mark Stewart, stand up Mark. Mark Stewart is here from Indianapolis, Indiana. We went to school. He pledged me. He pledged me back when hazing was allowed. And so, uh, just want y'all to know he hazed me a whole lot. And uh, very seriously, a good brother right there. I've always looked up to him and appreciate him so much, Mark. Proud of you, man, and all God is doing through you. And then right next to him, my brother Carl Felton, beautiful brother, stand up Carl in ministry, doing big things, great things, and just a good, good brother. And then, and then, my roommate, my roommate, don't tell nobody nothing. Marcus Wilson. Stand up, Marcus. Marcus is single, too. He is single. He is single. And a good brother, too. Making that paper. Yeah. He was in my wedding. He was in my wedding. He was in our wedding. I, yeah, I got married. So uh, he was in our wedding. And so, but Marcus, again, good. I love those brothers so much. Thank you so much. Good to see y'all. Thank y'all for coming today because I know y'all had quite a week and y'all still got up. And uh, I saw the pictures from last night and y'all still got up. So uh, they had a good night last night while well, I'm in New Orleans working. But uh, thank y'all. Is Floyd here? Floyd didn't make it. And Floyd is a member. He's a member. He didn't make it. Lord Jesus. Floyd, what's up, man? All right, so God bless you. Oh, where's, where's Pastor Magruder? All right. I hear, I hear we got, Pastor Magruder, we got, we got a show to show the thing. All right, let me just, uh, while we're showing it, cue the uh, thing. Y'all did the thing, okay? Y'all really blessed. Thank you. Mitch, you the man, you the man. Moms, listen, we have a family group text, and, and you should have seen what happened. Uh, on the family group text, after I pointed out my mother, uh, one of my family members said, y'all wake up. Auntie's about to sing. And then, the, and, and then when they were passing the mic, they said, pass the mic to Auntie. Auntie can sing. So just want y'all to know, we working on her. We working on her. All right. Cue it up. What's up, fabulous family of faith? Here's what's happening at the West. Join us every Wednesday night for West Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for our new Bible study format for a more intimate and deeper dive into the word with our senior pastor, our executive pastor, as well as our young adults and youth. 
Got a baby that needs to be dedicated? Infant dedications happen every fourth Sunday at 8.45 a.m. Sign up by emailing danderson at friendshipwest.org. August is Children, Youth, and Young Adult Month. Join us for a month-long celebration dedicated to the amazing children, youth, and emerging generations of Friendship West. The Community Back to School Fair, brought to you by Friendship West, Faith Formula, and the Chocolate Mint Foundation, will be held on August the 19th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Sign up to receive your children's backpacks, school supplies, health screenings, and much, much more. Supplies do go fast, so make sure you sign up now. Also, your child or children you register must be present to receive their supplies. For more information, visit www.faithformula.org. Beat the heat. Mac Hyatt Ford of DeSoto has teamed up with Faith Formula Human Services to provide some summer relief. Seniors 60 and older living in the southern sector of Dallas can receive a free AC unit. Limited supplies are available, so please make sure you sign up today, and there's one per household. Visit faithformula.org for more information. Season 3 of Fannie Lou's Classroom is almost here. Tune in live Thursdays at noon for Fannie Lou's Classroom with host Reverend Danielle Ayers. Subscribe to the podcast on YouTube at Fannie Lou's Classroom so you can stay tuned with the critical social issues that lead to advocacy, activism, and action. To learn more about getting involved, possibly being a sponsor, or advertising opportunities, or if you require support, don't hesitate to get in touch with them by email at flc at friendshipwest.org or call 972-228-5266. If you or a member of your family are in need of spiritual care, if you need to report a family hospitalization, or if you need to share the devastating news of the loss of a loved one with your church family, please do not hesitate to call the Pastor or Care Hotline at 972-228-7241. You can also send us an email to pastoracare at friendshipwest.org. Both the hotline and the email will be checked on a daily basis. Our church leadership is here and prepared to respond to your pastoral care needs. Also, the Comforters community helps those who are struggling or going through difficult times, maybe through a traumatic period in your life. Be it from a divorce, death, severe illness, or any other number of reasons people need assistance and encouragement going through the stresses and difficulties of life. You can join the Comforters community every first Saturday of the month, immediately following Pals in room D103. For more information, you can also email them at comforters at friendshipwest.org. So, you trying to get baptized? Baptism are held every fourth Sunday of the month at 9 a.m. Space is limited, so sign up today by emailing baptism at friendshipwest.org. Stay locked in with all things Friendship West by following us on all social media platforms and, of course, our YouTube channel. You can also stay up to date by signing up for our text alerts by simply texting FWBCINFO to the number 28950. That's FWBCINFO to the number 28950. Matter of fact, do it right now. Pull out your phone, text FWBC Info to the number 28950. Well, unfortunately, that's all I have for you for this week's edition of What's Happening at the West. But before we go, we would like to thank each and every one of you, especially our visitors who took the time to check us out this Sunday, whether you're in the house or online. We know that you could have went anywhere else in the world, but you decided to worship with us. And for that, we're grateful. And if you have a church home, we are praying for you and that ministry. But if you are church homeless, we would love for you to join us. And Pastor Haynes would love to be your pastor here at the Wild Wild West. We are large enough to serve you, but small enough to love you. So in your search for a church, you can end your quest at Friendship West. Why? Because at Friendship West, we ain't got nothing but love for you. Peace. All right. God bless you. Listen, did Pastor Magruder go to the other side already with the new members? Pastor Magruder, come here for a second, Doc. Come here. This is Pastor David Malcolm Magruder. He was not here last Sunday and um, because he was over in Cambridge, England, receiving his Master's of Studies degree. And so this is a Master of Studies on the Ph.D. route. David Malcolm Magruder, not Cambridge, Texas, not Cambridge, Massachusetts, Cambridge. How many of y'all got a degree from Cambridge? This is a bad Negro right here. So, so we're going to do something real special for him. If you have a gift you want to give him, that'd be cool. But next Sunday, we, I, I want us to hear what a Cambridge preacher sounds like. So next Sunday, we're going to hear a Cambridge preacher who? All right. The only Cambridge, you the Cambridge hooper. 
The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. <laughs> the Lord cause God's face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of God's countenance upon you, grant you peace. Go now in the power of God's Holy Spirit. Make sure you down with what God is up to. In Jesus' name, peace. OMG, that was fire. And we're fired up that you were here for it. You know what would be hot? You're checking out at Friendship West so that you can like, share, or subscribe us on social media. It helps more than you'll know. And also, please go to www.friendshipwest.org and find out even more about this powerful Christian movement. You'll feel all warm inside to see how your prayers, your offerings, or monetary gifts, and your investment of volunteer time can help make a difference with this difference-making ministry. For all who were here as visitors, you can share you were here by taking time to text FWBIZ to the number 28950. If you're fired up about joining our family of faith, don't fight the spirit. Instead, call now, 469-498-0210 or email Join us at friendshipwest.org with your first name, your last name, and your cell number. Either way, it will be lit to hear from you. Friendship West Baptist Church.